Hello and welcome to the Manager Q Sprint 185 review. This was a regular two week sprint. Um, as usual, I will provide the overview. Kavya will update us on the UI, Adam on the providers, and Jason on the rest. So, this sprint, there was an uptick in the number of pull requests uh, merged as well as opened. So, there were 94 merged and 104 opened, um, which mimicked a little closer sprint 183. In terms of the uh, distribution, there were 31, uh, 31 of the PRs addressed bugs and 27 addressed enhancements. And with that, I will turn it over to Kavya. Yep, thanks, Oleg. Um, in this sprint, total 15 PRs got merged into UI repos, nine bugs, two enhancements, and so on. Next one. Uh, for summary pages, download PDF functionality was broken fixed that bug here. When cloud tenants are open from host summary page, it was broken. Jeffrey fixed that bug in this PR. Automation managers or providers are having Ansible Tower, autom uh, Ansible Tower references in the UI and we are even pulling same DB. So changed all those references and um, even pulling the right DB now. We are pu directly pulling automation managers DB instead of Ansible Automation Managers. Next one. Our services page is having an intermittent uh, bug and Gilbert fixed that bug in his PR. Uh, in buttons view, an assigned buttons group is showing assigned group buttons, uh, fixed that bug in this PR. Uh, Gilbert converted cloud object storage uh, container form from um, Angular to React. He also added most of the schema fields to provider side as well. Next one. Jeffrey converted cloud volume, create backup and restore backup form to React from Angular. Um, all these PRs are technical depth. The, uh, him, Gilbert removed stale Angular references in the HTML files. I think that's all from UI. Over to Adam. Thanks, Kavya. The sprint, Nasser added the uh, CRUD operations uh, methods to core for cloud databases. So there's a default supports not for create, update, delete, and all of the associated queue and raw methods for the uh, base cloud database models there. Uh, for Amazon, uh, Gilbert added params for create for the cloud object store container uh, and also fixed up an issue where the uh, supports create was in the wrong place so that we can uh, match the behavior of OpenStack on the Amazon side. For Auto SDE, they added a rescue of a particular API error during validation so that they can give a better uh, descriptive error message to the user in case they provide invalid credentials. Next slide. Uh, for Cisco Intersight, they uh, enhanced the inventory collection to have better uh, display of physical switches, ports, and networks and associated relationships to the physical servers. Uh, so this is a nice uh, enhancement to improve the uh, amount of information they're able to display about the physical inventory. For Google, we fixed an issue where uh, shared cloud subnets aren't being uh, collected or returned with a certain set of credentials, which is causing a refresh failure because they were referenced by a VM and we we're expecting to see them in the subnets collection. So we handle that for now by skipping the nil, and then in the future, we're going to look at how we collect the shared uh, networks and, and subnets that aren't being returned by the, by the normal API. For IBM CIC, uh, they, fit, they customize the provider create form. Since there's no option of having an undercloud, uh, they override the params for create uh, coming from OpenStack to remove that option. So it cleans up the options to uh, only show what's available to be selected to the user when adding that type of provider. Next slide. For IBM Cloud, uh, Nasser added the uh, implementation for create, update, and delete for cloud databases for uh, VPC. Uh, we also added the um, provider region during refresh for Power Virtual Servers. So for Power VS, you actually pick a service instance. You don't select a region. Uh, the region is able to be derived from the uh, service instance, but 
uh, it's still nice to be able to show what region it is in. And so we set that during refresh so that it can be displayed to the user. Uh, they also added the CoreOS uh, operating system to the PowerVS operating system map. So it can be shown for uh, instances that are on PowerVS that run CoreOS as their operating system. For OpenStack, uh, Gilbert fixed the cloud subnet update. This was using some of the older style um, frames for create, which was passing in the ID. Uh, and that was not working for the updated DDF forms on the UI, so we fixed that one up. We improved, uh, there are messages that are being displayed when verifying credentials. There were a couple of cases that were not being handled by the existing exception handlers. And so it was dumping a huge, um, a huge JSON document to the to the user, which wasn't very really helpful. So now we display only the specific error that's being um, that's being shown in that doc. Uh, Gilbert also added params for create to Cloud Object Store Container Create and OpenStack for Cinder, um, as Kavi mentioned. And he also fixed a number of issues with uh, how Cloud Tenant IDs are being shown uh, that were causing errors when uh, creating and updating Cloud volumes and Cloud subnets. And lastly, for VMware, it fixed an API call failure for uh, the way that we got current time during save inventory that was causing a failure in that case. And that's it for me. Over to Jason. Hey, thanks, Adam. <clears throat> uh, Keenan added some Ruby 3.0 support to a number of our gems. Uh, these were uh, recently found during the GitHub Actions upgrades, and uh, he got those updated for Ruby 3 support. Um, Changes were added to a number of containers uh, to add support for building images on S390X. Uh, and Brandon added a uh, slash ping response for the remote console worker and also HTTPD configs for the pod. Uh, this particular pod didn't have slash ping and this follows on from his previous changes <clears throat> to have a better uh, Kubernetes readiness check that uses slash ping. Uh, on the bug side, Brandon fixed an issue uh, that's sort of been a long-standing thing that we keep patching, where some dependencies come from CentOS and some come from UBI 8. So he reorganized it so that we pull all the CentOS ones that we want from there uh, first. Uh, sorry, all the ones we want from UBI 8 first, and then we enable CentOS, and then we pull the rest. Uh, and this allows it to be a, li a little bit more deterministic. Um, and he also fixed a bug with the HTTP config, configs for the remote console worker, um, following on from the uh, PR above about the ping response. Uh, he also, Brandon also added some documentation uh, for how to add certificates for these remote console pods. Next slide, please. Uh, on the API side, Gilbert added uh, the Cloud Object Store container endpoints. Um, as you saw, Kavya showed the Cloud Object Store uh, Angular conversion. This follows on from that. <clears throat> and so you can do a post with create uh, uh, or uh, an options call to get the DDF forms. Uh, and he also added params for edit support to the cloud subnets options. So if you post to uh, cloud sub, or sorry, if you do an options call to cloud subnets, uh, you can get the params for edit DDF form. Uh, and Jeffrey fixed an issue with the cloud volume create backup and restore backup methods. Slide, please. Uh, on the developer side, we had a number of changes. Um, the biggest one is we switched uh, almost all of the repositories to GitHub Actions. There's only two left, uh, and they're only not converted because they're very difficult to do due to the nature of how GitHub Actions deploys Postgres in a container, uh, and we need to modify that container. Uh, so those are still ongoing, but uh, as you can see, a number were uh, completed this sprint. Uh, on the MIQ bot, uh, we added support for the word includes in addition to including for cross repo tests. Um, this is just a UX convenience. Um, sometimes people type in includes and the bot can't pick it up. So why not support it? Uh, and Adam similarly added a change to support space delimited repo names. Uh, we originally only supported comma separated, but it's not hard to figure out if it's space separated. And a lot of people do that and accidentally make mistakes. So this um, this just allows for that. <clears throat> uh, and also Adam uh, on the documentation side added two guides, one for how to subclass an existing provider to create a new provider. Uh, for example, if you have an OpenStack based provider, you can subclass an OpenStack, the OpenStack provider to create your provider. Uh, and you also added a guide for writing uh, provider VCR specs. And that's it. Very good.
Thank you. Um, next sprint will be in two weeks, usual time and place. And with that, I want to thank uh, all the uh, speakers, all the contributors, and the entire ManagerQ community. And uh, thank you, and we'll be back in two weeks.